When these senseless times come, we can become bitter. We can become resentful, grumbling and murmuring about God. Job's wife did. She became bitter. She became resentful. That's why she said to Job, curse God. Give up on God and die. But we can grin and bear it. We can, become, we can become a martyr of our faith. We can look for the good that God is working. That's what Joseph did. There was a story of an old man who always, was always positive and full of life, even though he was enduring many hardships and poor health. When asked, how can you be positive about the future? He would reply, it is found in the Bible. Where in the Bible, somebody says. Well, the Bible says it over and over again. It came to pass. Nowhere does it say in the Bible that it's come to stay. <laughs> It'll soon be over with troubles and trials. Amen? When I get home on the other side, It'll soon be over. This world is not our home. We're only passing through. You see, God said it came to pass. And the trouble that you're going through will come to pass. The sickness you're going through will come to pass. The financial problems you're going through will come to pass. The, the death in your family that you're going through, it will come to pass. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Can somebody praise God this morning? Hallelujah. May God help you and I to know joy once again. Can you say amen? We need to trust God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And then finally, when it doesn't make sense, remember your destination. This is not an escape from reality, rather it's anticipation. This is what kept Paul going and motivated. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, Therefore there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. I want you to know that you are free in Christ Jesus. Free to worship. Free to praise. Free to give Him glory. Free to bow your knee. Free to bless Him. Can you say amen? Free to worship. You are free whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. The world thinks they're free, but they're not free. They're in bondage. But thanks be to Jesus Christ. Those of you who are saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are free in Christ Jesus, whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. You are free from your past. You are free from your sins. You are free from your burdens. You are free from your sickness. You are free from your trials. You are free from your difficulties. You are free from your friends. Hallelujah. You are free from un unforgiveness. You are free from bitterness. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has set you free this morning. Praise God. And you need to shake yourself. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And give God praise. Hallelujah. And thank you today because you are free in Christ Jesus. The devil has no hold on you. The world has no hold on you. You are free in Christ Jesus and you can have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I wish somebody would give God praise in here for the freedom that they have in Christ Jesus. Can you somebody say amen? Oh glory be to God today. Hallelujah. Church, you are free. I said you are free. You are free. Hallelujah. Nobody, I know that the song says, no grave can hold my body down. Hallelujah. For the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever breathe. Even the grave cannot hold our body down. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ rose triumphantly. We will be raised triumphantly. Hallelujah. And we sit with God, Christ Jesus, in heavenly places. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, God's Son, sits at the right hand of the Father and He makes intercession for us and He calls us a royal priesthood and a holy nation and a peculiar people. Praise God. Right now you may be in trouble and trials, but you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. If you will just worship Him and praise Him, hallelujah, you are seated with Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Can somebody worship Him today? You see, the problem with us as Christians, we don't realize who we are.
And I said, the problem with Christians, we don't realize who we are. The problem with us as Christian young people, we don't realize who we are. We're not seated with chickens. We're not seated with crows. We're not seated with ducks. We're not seated with pigeons, but we are seated in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, if you want to be seated with anybody, I'd be seated with Jesus. Because when, you, when you're seated with Jesus, you've got a big brother that, that no, no devil can, can come there. You can't say amen. amen. He can come near you, but he can't touch you. Can you say amen? amen? You are seated with Christ Jesus and nobody can touch you in Jesus' name. No devil of hell can touch you in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? We've got the victory. The song says hallelujah. We've got the victory. We've got the victory, I said. I mean, somebody needs to praise God in here. I tell you, somebody needs to praise God in here because your victory is sitting right beside you. Come on, somebody. I said, your victory is sitting right beside you. It's not your neighbor. It's not your brother. It's not your sister. It's Jesus Christ, God's Son. He is our victory. Can you say amen? Oh, glory be to God. Somebody, somebody give a praise today. I mean, somebody give a praise today. Somebody give a praise today. God is lifting somebody out of depression right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is lifting somebody out of trouble right now. God is lifting somebody out of sickness right now. God is lifting somebody out of disease right now. And he's seating you with Jesus Christ. Can somebody praise him? Oh, come on, praise him today. Come on, praise him. When it doesn't make sense, remember your destination. This world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm passing through. Do you know, praise God, we, that gold is over $1,800 an ounce? $1,800 an ounce. If I, if I knew what gold was going to be, I would have invested in gold. I would have been a rich man today. But I didn't know. Gold was like $300. It's now gone up to $1,800. Can you imagine you invested in a few hundred ounces, how, how rich you would be today? But I guess God didn't want me to be rich. He wanted me to be the poor preacher. <laughs> Keep me humble, right? But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the streets of heaven are paved with gold. We're so, you know, we're so... We, you know, we're so happy when we drive upon paved roads. But you know what? In heaven, Jesus has taken gold and made, made it pavement. That's how common gold is to God. The Bible says He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The Bible tells us that He is our provider. You see, God is in control. Can you say amen? This world is not our home. What we are looking... I mean, you know, we want to be on, on, on streets paved with tar. But I don't want to be on streets paved with tar. I want to be on streets paved with gold. Can you say amen? You see, when we go through things, we cannot be compared to the magnificent future God has planned for us. Remember, this world is not our home. When you live in anticipation of the rapture, it changes your view. When you live with the assurance of eternity, it changes your outlook. Jesus said in John eleven twenty six, 26, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Paul says, absent from this body means to be present with the Lord. We must live every day looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In conclusion, this life is filled with crisis. Life is filled with crisis. It seems that you go through crisis after crisis. Has God forgotten you? No. Is God silent? No. God is there. He wants you to trust Him. He wants you to obey Him. He wants you to look to Him. He wants you to realign your focus. Not on earth. So many of us are so earthbound that we're no heavenly good. Everything that we look to is on this earth. But we got to look to heaven. Can you say amen? Because when you look to heaven, when you look to Jesus, when you look to the eternal life, you realize that this world's stuff is just nothing compared to the blessing that God has for us. This life is filled with crises and circumstances that just don't make sense. There will be nights plagued with nausea and pain for which there is no relief. There will be times when we feel trapped with no means of escape. 
There will be circumstances that will go in unending ending circles for which we have no control. But in these times, we must remember and recognize, number one, recognize your frustration. Realize your limitations, realign your revelation, and remember your destination. If you read the end of the chapter or the end of the book of Job, you will find that God blessed Job beyond what he could receive. The blessings that he had in the former were nothing compared to that he had after he went through those difficult times. Church, I want you to understand that the things that you are going through now cannot be compared to what God has in store for you. Because one of these days, when you stand before Him, He will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. Here is your crown. Here is your robe of righteousness. And so I want to encourage you today that when it doesn't make sense, and there may be a lot of things that don't make sense in your life right now, I want you to realize that you need to trust God in everything that you are going through. In everything the Bible says, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Maybe it doesn't make sense right now. But to God, it does make sense. And you need, and I need to have complete trust and faith in Him. I want every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed. I want to ask this question today. If you are here in this church, and you have not committed your life to Christ, and you would like to give your heart over to Jesus, would you lift your hand and say, Pastor Ron, would you pray with me? I need Christ in my life. Is there one person? One person in this